Senator, 100 percent of the vote sounds pretty good to me in the Democratic Senate <laughs> primary. Um, I'll take it. I Considering, a, well, yeah, I mean, there weren't a lot of people running, but I think my, my career in terms of fighting for workers and taking on special interest is why nobody challenged me in the primary. But I didn't really expect to, st to talk about 100 percent of the vote. But thank you very much, Lawrence. So you, you have uh, a son of Ohio, Martin Sheen, uh, who does not easily step forward in these situations. Uh, tell us about how that ad came together with Martin Sheen. Yeah, we, we've, uh, Martin, and, Martin and I and Con Janet and Connie and my wife have known each other now for more than a decade. Martin, I love to tell the story. He's been in campaigning a half dozen times for me, and I love to tell the story. Martin Sheen's first job was he was a caddy at the Dayton Country Club, and he was fired for trying to organize a union. So that's who Martin Sheen is. Dignity of work absolutely fits him. And he's fought the same kind of special interests we do and always devote his life to justice. And one of my favorite moments campaigning is when Martin uh, spent, spent two days with us. The second day back in 2012, we ended up in John Glenn's apartment for a fundraiser. And all day Martin was talking about, I can't believe I'm going to get to see John Glenn and go to his apartment. And John Glenn had told me two days earlier, I can't believe Martin Sheen's coming to my place. So um, two, two heroes as far as I'm concerned uh, in very different ways. Ways, but both of them just terrific human beings that fight for justice and fought for people who, who don't always get a break in life. You know, I didn't begin this segment tonight thinking I was going to learn a new biographical fact about Martin Sheen and his very right. first organizing experience uh, at the country club. That's a, that's a great one. Uh, so as you go forward in this campaign, it looks like you now you, you know who you're going to be running against. Uh, Bernie Moreno, what do Ohio voters need to know uh, so that they know what's at stake in this election between these two candidates for Senate? Well, they, they know that that um, Bernie Moreno always looks out for himself. I mean, he he is um, he has said in this campaign that he won't work with Democrats. Uh, he just is going to go to Washington and do his own thing. Uh, he's illustrated that by, again, calling for a national abortion ban uh, with no exceptions, even though Ohio overwhelmingly last November uh, voted by 13 points uh, for a, for a, uh, for constitutional amendment on abortion rights. And uh, the arrogance of he doesn't really care what the voters want. Um, that's really who he is. And we will make that contrast of I fight for Ohio. Um, I listen to people. I do roundtables all over the state. That's how we that's how we helped Senator Tester write the PACT Act. That's how we got a good infrastructure bill. That's how we got the CHIPS bill. It's going to create thousands of jobs in Ohio. That's how you do this job. You go county to county. You listen to people. You come back with ideas. You convince your colleagues to pass the child tax credit. You convince your colleagues uh, on a whole host of issues, like on the pension bill, where we save the pension of 100,000 Ohio workers, Ohio, Ohio, Ohio union workers. So um, that's how you do this job. You don't approach it arrogantly and I know best I don't care um, that women have said that they want control with their doctors of their own health care I know better and I'm going to do I'm going to override that overturn that and that's really why this election you know, it's it's always as you know Lawrence we've talked in the show you've said you've devoted your show to this in many ways it's whom you fight for and it's it's government needs to be it's it's who's on your side and that's really why I win in Ohio and why we're going to see a pretty good year this year around the country. Now, there were uh, indications that the Democratic Party, certainly, and I'm not so sure about you, but the Democratic Party definitely wanted uh, Moreno as your opponent because they believe that the more extreme uh, the Republican is, the better it is for you. And it would have been more of a challenge for you running against the more moderate Republican. Uh, what, what's your assessment of what it's going to take uh, in running against Moreno, yeah, I didn't. I didn't weigh in on that. I, I didn't even know that that was going to happen until it did happen. Um, but it, you know, it goes back. I mean, I first of all, I'm going to have a tough race. They're going to have tens of millions of dollars. Moreno is a rich guy uh, who inherited a lot of wealth, and he's going to be spending it in this prime in this race as he did in the primary. But I always come down whose who's side you on. That's why I ask people uh, to come to SheridBrown.com and help us as volunteers, as contributors. We'll win this race. We'll be outspent, but we'll be we'll out organize. We'll have more grassroots contributors. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's how I've won elections in the past. I don't, I don't see politics left or right. I see it as whose side you're on. And that means taking on the drug companies uh, and, and putting a cap, as you've talked on this show, putting a cap on insulin at $35 and putting a cap on out-of-pocket costs for seniors. It means passing the PACT Act. It means passing the pension bill. It means uh, standing up for the child tax credit, which dropped temporarily, only a year, but we'll be back with it, uh, dropped the child poverty rate by 40 percent. I learned those things by listening to people. The mother-in-law of, a, of, a, of Heath Robinson, the bill's named after him in the PACT Act, listening to his mother-in-law talk about what happened to him when he returned from service after exposure to those burn pits. And that's how you legislate. And my opponent is, thinks you legislate by um, just doing what you think you should do. And I don't think people trust that. They don't trust him on abortion. They don't trust him on ethics. They don't trust him on fighting, on taking on interest groups. The uh, Democratic Senate uh, Campaign Committee weighed in uh, against your Republican opponent tonight just about a minute uh, after the race was called uh, for Bernie Marino, who will now be the Republican nominee running against you for Senate. Uh, let's look at the ad they put out tonight. Meet Bernie Marino. Even Republicans don't trust him. This is why this man can't be trusted. I don't know if we can trust you. Bernie would overrule Ohio voters to pass a national abortion ban. Absolute, absolute pro-life, no exceptions. He said he doesn't think that the minimum wage should exist. And at the end of the day, the markets will flush that out. And he would repeal the Affordable Care Act. The Affordable Care Act, it actually made health care much more expensive. The bill to secure the border and keep fentanyl out of our communities, he called it... Complete garbage. Complete garbage. And he was sued by employees because he didn't pay them overtime they'd earned and destroyed evidence to get out of it. You shredded those documents because it helped Bernie Marino, not the employees. To put it simply... This is a matter of trust. Republicans don't trust Bernie Marino. Why should you? What else, what, what else would you like me to say? So this is the Donald Trump chosen candidate uh, to run in Ohio. Donald Trump uh, is, has been on a winning streak in Ohio himself. Uh, so it, it seems to me that, that this candidate is going to have an awful lot of support from Donald Trump while you have support from the Democratic Senate Campaign Committee. Well, and I'm going to run my own race. I'm not a pundit about who's going to vote how. I know that uh, when I focus on taking on interest groups, when I focus on what we've done to fight back against what Norfolk Southern did, to a lot of people in my state with that train derailment, what the drug companies have done uh, on overpricing. What, what my wife and I, every, almost every Sunday after church, we go to a grocery store in the neighborhood. And I, I see people all the time who are paying more for their groceries uh, because of stock buybacks and because of bonuses that executives get. So people know, regardless of who's running for president, regardless of, of any of those punditry comments, people know that I'm going to stand up and take on interest groups. That's why, you know, as I've done before, that's why I ask people to come to SharonBrown.com, step up. This will be a grassroots effort. Uh, we show that every day. It's how I win elections. It's how you represent people. You don't just go to country clubs and go to Wall Street and do all that. You you show up in communities, you do roundtables, you listen to people because the best ideas, I don't have the best ideas, the best ideas come from people in my state, big cities, small towns, suburbs, farms. I met with a number of farmers this past week, soybean farmers, and we talked about what we can do for with, with soybeans and, 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 and uh, may actually turning into jet fuel. And I wouldn't have thought of that, but these farmers did, and we've seen the science that that can happen. And, and there's just all kinds of opportunities opportunities. If you open your ears and listen, uh, you can make a big difference in this job. And I think that I don't think my opponent understands that. I do. That's why I've been successful every day working for Ohio and why I've been successful in elections in the past. Senator Sherrod Brown, thank you very much for teaching me something always. I did not know about our dear friend Martin Sheen. <laughs> and, thank you. Lawrence, uh, and for joining us tonight on this important election night in Ohio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Simon, president uh, working in the Southwest, uh, trying to shore up the Latino vote. Uh, once again tonight in Ohio, uh, President Biden getting a much higher percentage of the vote in his primary than Donald Trump does in his primary. Uh, Sherrod Brown now has an identified opponent in the Senate election race, a full Trump-supported opponent who is uh, as Trumpy as Donald Trump. 
Uh, what's your assessment of the state of the race on this Ohio primary night? Well, I think that the most important thing, as you mentioned, is that the Biden campaign is really turning on. I mean, we're start, they're starting to spend the money that you mentioned, this big cash advantage they have over Trump. They're starting to get deeper now into the general election. The, the president and the vice president are campaigning much more. And there's some evidence. I mean, I don't want to jump the gun here a little bit, but there's some evidence that you're starting to see things shift a little bit more in his favor. There are five polls taken since the State of the Union and have Biden ahead now. Uh, and in the economist tracking poll, uh, the, the economist averages, it tracks all the polls. He's actually up by one point over Trump now. So, you know, here we are. We're in the general election. Joe Biden's a strong president. The Democratic Party is winning elections across the country. And Trump is an unprecedented dumpster fire, as you've been talking about all night on this show. So uh, we're, we're running the ads that the Biden campaign is doing because yeah. they can afford them and the Trump campaign cannot. <laughs> uh, some stunning numbers coming out about Trump fundraising. Uh, in 2023, last year, the year before the election year, the Trump yeah. campaign raised 62.5 percent less money from the small uh, dollar donors than it did in 2019, the year before that election. And those small dollar donors are really huge funders uh, in the aggregate of past Trump yep. campaigns. Yeah, look, I mean, Trump is in trouble right now. I think the, the, you know, the Trump is strong bubble is bursting in front of our eyes. I mean, he's been under, as we've discussed on air here, he's been underperforming polling in virtually every early state and struggling in these primaries much more than Biden did in his. They're, you know, they're struggling mightily raising money, both hard dollars uh, with low dollar donors and also high dollar donors, right? We're going to see one of the worst uh, presidential year financial reports from Trump probably in the next few days. Republicans are fleeing the House and retiring in, in record numbers. There's an unprecedented revolt in the Republican Party right now. We've got news today that a bunch of Haley's most important fundraisers, wealthy people, have now shifted over to Biden and not to Trump. I mean, this thing, Lawrence, we've been doing this a long time. I mean, this is the ugliest political thing that we've ever seen. And I think part of what's beginning to happen now is the bubble, this idea that Trump is somehow strong. He's not. He's weak. He's a dumpster fire. He's not a juggernaut. And, and I think that the media is beginning to wake up to the fact that Biden is coming out of the State of the Union strong with a huge wind at his back. And Trump is struggling in an unprecedented way as we head into the general. Uh, the New York Times is reporting that there's more money coming Biden's way. The League of Conservation voters want yeah. to put $120 million uh, into the Biden campaign. Outside groups like that uh, are pledged already for at least a billion dollars. No such announcements on the Republican side. Yeah, look, there is, as we've discussed, I mean, since Dobbs, the Democratic Party is fired up and we've been winning elections, raising tons of money. We've been taking stuff away from them all over the country. It's a very energized party. We know what's at stake here, right? We know that democracy is on the line. And, you know, people all across the country are responding to this call to step up for the Democrats. The same has not been happening on the Republican side. I mean, since Dobbs, they have struggled again and again in election after election. They're now struggling to raise money as well. And, and I think that, you know, we head into the general here with the Democratic Party strong, unified and winning elections. The Republican Party struggling, deeply divided and in, in rough shape as we head into the general. So, you know, as I like to say, Lawrence, in every way imaginable, I would much rather be us than them as we head into the general election now. Yeah, and the reason we stress the money is that the big money expenditure is buying television ads, and that is still the way that you reach the swing voter in the end. Simon Rosenberg, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Lawrence.